Hi, I'm Julia Griffin and welcome back to Raw Ivory Motion Design. Today I'm going to show you how to design a beautiful, unique title sequence in less than an hour. It has an After Effects and Adobe Premiere workflow. The title sequence that I'm going to design today is for the movie Barbarella. Now I love Barbarella, it's a raunchy sci-fi comedy from the 1960s, very Euro trash. It stars Jane Fonda going on sexy adventures across the universe. See Barbarella do her thing. Could you hand me a garment? In Barbarella, in the set designs, there were a ton of these uh, liquid psychedelic looking graphics because this was like height of the hippie Haight-Ashbury acid craze. I looked up who invented these kind of visuals and I could not find it. So if anybody knows more about the history of these types of visuals, please comment down below and let me know. Let's get started. This was the funnest part of this tutorial for me, was shooting uh, some abstract uh, liquid footage. Now for shooting, what you're going to need is what I've pictured here. Now this is a vegan, uh, <laughs> This is a vegan version of this particular visual experiment. So I use soy milk, dish soap, uh, really nice bright green dish soap, ink, and um, some olive oil. You'll also see some nail polish there as well. Um, I'm sh I shot a lot of stock footage in one go, and some of the experiments I shot were with nail polish and water. So what you're going to do is take about a quarter cup, you know, whatever kind of milk you want to use, soy or otherwise, just start throwing in some oil, throw in some dish soap, mix it up, twirl the bowl around, um, and I blew on it with a straw to create more, some more action shots. Now shoot a bunch of this. Try to get nice still shots. And if you don't have any of those, we're gonna pour on the warp stabilizer and then do some simple color correction in Premiere. So we're gonna choose some smooth, nice action shots. I've been using curves a long time because I come from a Photoshop background and so curves is very intuitive to me. You have a lot of options for color correction in Premiere. I won't list them all, um, but I do encourage you to go through and experiment with them and see which one you're the most comfortable with. While we wait for our footage to render out of Premiere so we can start playing with it in After Effects, I'm going to touch on how I chose the typography for this sequence. Now, I've mentioned before in my free resources videos that I love dafont.com. Now, dafont.com has tons and tons of free and OpenGL typefaces for you to use that people have posted, you know, just because. The last time I looked at my Day of the Shark title sequence, I was really bored with the typography. So I decided to use something a little more fun, a little more out there and a little more sci-fi, especially because Barbarella is nothing if it is not out there in sci-fi. I chose Dissolve Regular because of its sci-fi connotations and its very 70s uh, Italian Euro trash look. When you're choosing typography for film titling, think about the voice that your film has. Is it horror, action, sci-fi, comedy? Also, when is your movie set, or when is it from? You want the type to give your sequence or card an authentic voice that will give the viewer a sense of place and time. Not just in the visual of the type itself, but in the way that you animate it. For the type animation, I wanted to imitate the 1970s, um, sort of a uh, scrolling that sort of like post Saul Bass look that you see in a lot of um, old trailers and old title sequences. Um, to achieve this effect I wanted a nice roll in and a nice roll out and a quick resting spot on the title in the center. So uh, this is how my comp looked. I sequenced the layers so that they looked like an arrow pointing left and that was the roll out and I sequenced the layers in an arrow pointing right and that was the roll in. Uh, when I first drafted this I had the roll the roll out first and then the roll in second and uh, this didn't feel quite sequential enough um, so I flipped them in the end product. I framed the video with a simple vignette made of a solid um, masked out with a round cornered square. Um, I also set up a basic lighting 
uh, two spots and a single ambient light, very wide angle, to have a very soft edge. Um, I played with the material options of the type layer, which you can see here is pre-composed, so that the way the lights hit it would be more effective. I also added a glow to the type to make it feel um, a little shinier and give it a little extra glam. The film is a very glamorous movie, you know, uh, using gl glamorous looking women, you know, uh, <laughs> rich costumes, rich sets, and uh, bright colors to create the atmosphere of uh, sensuality and excess. Eventually I decided that using the lights on the video texture was not really using the natural colors and tones that really looked good on the film well, and it was looking too muddy and too dark. So I made the background layer into a 2D layer so that uh, the lights would have no effect on it. Instead I went with the more natural look using only a simple hue saturation layer to bring out the colors and to tint them slightly. I also used this technique with the film grain textures that I used. One additional effect I applied was using the film grain texture as a displacement map over the entire composition in an adjustment layer. That would give the type, the background, and everything else um, sort of more movement and more depth, as well as giving it a more dated and less digital look. The final effect that I applied was an echo effect in the type layer. I felt like the animation was a little bit too chunky, and because there are no keyframes to adjust in a simple sequencing, I added the echo effect to give it a smoother and um, slightly glitzier motion. The idea for this animation was sort of a dated glitz and glam look, um, again, post Saul Bass, to kind of uh, really date this film because it's not an early 60s type film, it's actually made in 1968, right on the cusp of the 1970s. As with all my projects, I rendered this out of After Effects as a lossless AVI. That way I could take it into Premiere and re-render it as an H.264 in any format for any platform. As you can see, another benefit of this particular design is a very quick render time, even in a lossless format, clocking in at about three minutes. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, like and subscribe for more. Uh, let me know if you felt like anything was left out of this tutorial and um, let me know what you'd like to see in the future. My next video will probably be some more quick tips um, in After Effects. All right, have a great day.